Hey now everybody, Jamie here. And you know, a couple of weeks ago, something happened to me that, that kind of made me feel nostalgic. It made me feel like I felt when I was first getting into hobby board games. And it made me kind of think about all the things that I love about this hobby and all the things I love about gaming and the way I used to feel about all these things and how I'm kind of missing some of those things in my life now and I'd kind of like to get those things back. Uh, let me start by saying that everybody gets into gaming and enjoys tons of different things about this whole hobby of ours. And there's all different kinds of levels at which you can get into it as well. And I would call myself an enthusiast, meaning that when I get into a hobby that I really enjoy, I dive in with both feet right into the deep end and I go whole hog. I don't, I don't kind of dip my toe into it. And that's what I mean by hardcore. Like I go, I go almost go too far sometimes with the hobby. And that's why I do this media. That's why I start, we started our podcast. That's why I do these video productions and, and manage, you know, going on social media and all this stuff as the secret cabal is because when I got into it, you know, gaming, you can't always have somebody around to play a game with. Uh, sometimes your wife doesn't feel like it. Sometimes your friends are busy and can't do it, but I still wanted to be into gaming. I still wanted to do something. So I started doing the media with the other guys and that's sort of an outlet for me to sort of be in the hobby more than I was before. And it's the same thing with games like Magic the Gathering and, and, and War Machine and Warhammer 40,000 and these miniature games and stuff is because those games are great because you can play a game with your friends and when your friends go home, you could still play the game by assembling miniatures, by painting, by creating armies, by building decks. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is the same way, by designing uh, adventures for your friends the next time you get together. It's all part of the hobby. And everybody likes to get into the hobby at different levels. Well, when you're like me and you get into a hobby super deeply, sometimes you start to lose some of that, that exploration, that wonder, that discovery that you originally had when you first got into it. And let me kind of explain my sort of history of gaming. When I first started off, I played Dungeons and Dragons when I was in middle school. I talked about it in a, in a recent uh, video. And I played that for a good long time. And then we discovered Magic the Gathering and we got into that. We were all deck building. And, and I will say this, I didn't get into Magic to any great level. You know, I never went to tournaments. And as a matter of fact, I don't think in my entire life I've ever bought a booster pack. I would buy the starter decks and then I would individually buy cards when I wanted to build a deck. But I was into it. I was into researching and seeing the cards and, and finding cool combos and buying those cards and putting them together for a deck. And then on to that, I went to Warhammer Fantasy Battles, and that was sort of a logical escalation of my hobby in a sense. You know, I wanted to continue what we were doing with Magic the Gathering, but do it with miniatures and painting and assembly and creating armies that I could fight my friends with and kind of delve deeply into the strategies of the game. Then board games happen. And now, board games happened because, you know, we were all sitting around one night and and I had heard on a podcast that I was listening to, a role-playing podcast, a Review of the Boot, my favorite role-playing podcast that I'd ever been. They talked about a board game once, Settlers of Catan. They mentioned it a couple of times. I had never heard of it before. And we were sitting around one night near Christmas and we and I kind of brought it up and I was like, yeah, this can, I kind of feel like playing a board game. You guys want to try a board game? They were like, yeah, let's do it. So we ran out, we bought the game, we brought it back, we played it, we played it a thousand times we loved it we fell in love with hobby board gaming and then I did the unthinkable I bought another game trying to recapture what we found with Settlers of Catan I don't even remember what our second game was but once I bought that second game it opened up the gates and now I was going to be a collector I started collecting board games and trying new ones all the time and What's different about board games and all those other games is there was no outside of the game fun. I mean, you could read the rules and learn the rules. You could study tactics and strategies in the games and get better at them. Of course, you could do all those things, but there was no hobby aspect or building aspect like magic and designing dungeons for your friends to go through that just didn't exist. So to sort of fill that niche of what I wanted to get out of a whole hobby of board gaming, 
was I started researching and buying new games. And that's where this whole concept comes in that I'm talking about that sort of made me feel nostalgic. Since I got into hobby board gaming and started doing all of this media, I started reading news and following Board Game Geek, whatever was on the hotness. Like, what's the new hot thing that I haven't seen yet? I, I read about it. Oh, that's coming up in six months. I'm watching Kickstarter and all the cool Kickstarter games that are coming up and reading press releases of the upcoming Kickstarters that are going to be out in the next few months. And, and at this point, it's gotten where there is no more discovery. I guess that's the discovery, but that's not fun. Those games aren't going to exist for another year or maybe maybe two years, some of them. And that discovery and exploration, like the archaeology of being a board gamer, has kind of gone away from me. And two weeks ago, it happened. I found a game online that I had never heard of before. A friend of mine uh, messaged me, Ben Hilliard, he texts me, and he, uh, he says, hey man, do you know any games that have a space race theme? And well, off the top of my head, I knew there was one in Kickstarter a year or so ago that was called Space Race. It was a card game, it looked fun, got cool artwork. I never played it, might be fun. Uh, and then I started doing a little research for him. And I found, you know, I was thinking, oh, well, High Frontier from Phil Eklund. It's not really about the Space Race, but it's space exploration. I was looking on BGG and I thought, hmm, I'm going to click on one of those categories. Each game has all these different categories that it falls into. And I clicked on space exploration and a list came up and I ordered it by the rank on board game geek, like best to worst. And I noticed this one that was somewhere in the middle between 600 and 700 ranked. And it's called leaving earth. And I never heard of this game before. Never saw the box art in my life. And it's ranked very highly. You know, 600 to 700 on Board Game Geek is amazing because of the tens of thousands of games on there. If you're up there in the top thousand, that's really good. That's a really good ranking. And it was weird that I never heard of this game before in my whole life. And I started looking into it. And it's about the space race, so I sent that off to him and said, here, here's one. But I started looking into it for myself. The artwork is gorgeous. It looks like 1960s style artwork, like the era of the space race. And that just drew me in. And I started looking at the mechanics like, oh, you can develop all these different rockets and you have to test the rockets because if you don't test the rockets, they could explode and your astronauts will blow up in space. And that'd be a failed mission. You're getting all these mission cards and you're trying to, to achieve the mission cards before the other players, like a space race. Like, oh, I'm going to be the first to put a man on the moon and bring him home. I'm going to be the first to send a probe to Mars. And it's a little bit of a Visionist history because you can, I think, land a man on Mars. I don't know, we never did that before, but you could do it in the game. And you, when you get there, you could explore some things. And it just captured me. I watched some videos on it. There aren't that many videos for it, but I watched some and it just, I just wanted this game. And I felt this lust, this, this feeling of discovery and exploration like I haven't felt in years because I've been so consumed with what's coming next, what's down the line here, what's the new hotness and the new hype and what's coming on Kickstarter real soon. And I lost this feeling of wonder of discovering a new game. And I want to get that back because I really loved it. And I, to be honest with you, I felt the same thing with Gaslands, the game I did some videos for recently in our podcast, we just reviewed it. When I found that game, I was like, man, I really want a game with cars with guns. I'm gonna get this game. I got it for Christmas actually from my in-laws. And, and I felt the same thing when I was discovering this game, when I, was, when I figured out that this was a really good game. It was something I had never heard of until I just stumbled upon it on amazon.com, really. It's how I found it. And it's so amazing when you get those feelings back. And I want to try to get those feelings back because it's so much fun to find the hidden gem. The hidden gem is my favorite thing about this hobby. You know, I love game. Like when I say that, like, of course I like playing the games better. And I like hanging out with my friends playing the games better. But outside of those, those the specifics of gaming, the outside hobby, I've lost the wonder and I want to get it back. And, and these two incidences, Gaslands and this Leaving Earth game, have really inspired me to look for those hidden gems now. I'm going to go and find it and I'm going to recapture what it felt like to be a, a gamer right at the beginning. It's exciting. It's a really exciting feeling and I'm getting back to it. 
Well, thanks so much, everybody, for joining me here as I muse about the old days and wanting to get back to them. If you like board games, miniatures games, card games, role-playing games, please check out our audio podcast, The Secret Cabal Gaming Podcast and Lords of the Dungeon. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com and on iTunes. And while you're here, do me a fast favor and click the subscribe link and click the bell because YouTube is dumb. And with that, have a good one, everybody.